Hello Fiber Friends! Welcome to the Felicity Yarn Studio channel. My name is Zoe and this is a little bit of a different video than what I normally sit down and make. However, the Advent knitting season is upon us. It's almost time to start opening up your Advent calendars. And since I dye up Advents every year, I get asked questions about what are some pattern suggestions to use with these. So I know that there are quite a few different types of Advents or mini skein sets out there nowadays, you know, Halloween, Easter, you name it, dyers are dying up. <laughs> advent calendars to go with them. So I wanted to compile this list of patterns. These are things that of course are going to skew towards my taste. I tend to like to work with blending colors and texture. I know that there are some more like lacy, like lace sampler type patterns out there. Um, I did try to include some crochet and a variety of projects. The list is probably gonna be pretty shawl heavy. <laughs> Um, but this is also a great list if you have a bunch of scraps or if you just like to collect mini skeins like I do throughout the year because why not? So I will be leaving links down below mainly to Ravelry to everything that I talk about today. I'll try to leave alternate links where they are available and of course that is where you can find all of my social media information as well. So to start things off, I have the Flying Fringe Shawl. This is by Beta Jezik, and she is the dyer behind Hedgehog Fibers. I personally really love this shawl. I love the fringe on it. I think it would be a really fun way to blend a fade kit or even a non-fade kit. Um, to see how colors kind of play together. It is one that has been in my queue for a while. You'll notice a running theme throughout this video of patterns that I want to make. I also know that she has uh, recently, like this year, I think released her Le Pouf cardigan, which is kind of a fade cardigan. And I think it uses full size skeins, but I feel like you could easily adapt um, an advent calendar to work with that. That's the thing to note is that a lot of these advent calendars are quite generous with the yardage, especially if you opt for the 20 gram option, um, that's 92 yards times 24. And a lot of them will include either a half skein or a full skein at the end. Um, so that's well over 2000 yards. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna try to do the math here on screen for you. The next pattern I have is the Calico Quilt Shawl and this is by Samantha Troya. She also has a couple of other advent designs which were really pretty, um, but this is a pattern that I think I'm gonna knit the calendar that I dyed up this year with. I really love how it kind of plays on quilt squares. I think it's a really unique design and it could be a really fun way to play with color placement. Following that, I have the Just Feel Festive Shawl. This is by Kalisha Ryan of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. <laughs> and this is a crochet shawl. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> um, but this looks like a really fun, kind of simple, um, biased based um, granny stripe type of pattern. So I kind of want to take a closer look at that and see you know, if I need to add that to my list as well. And now I have one here for all of you lace knitters. This is the Time Trades Shawl by Caitlin Hunter. And this one was not necessarily designed to be a advent shawl. However, I think it would work really well since it has those like individual blocks of color. Again, I'm not a lace knitter, but this is a really beautiful shawl and one that I think could be adapted into an advent pattern. And next on the list is the Tasting Menu Shawl. This is by Stephanie Lotvin. This is a pattern that was written with only 10 colors, but I think you could easily adapt this one as well to use more or less colors, um, depending on what kind of kit you have. And following that, I have the Fade Into Advent. This is by Lisa K. Ross. This is a really beautiful pattern, especially for fade sets. Um, I know that Naomi, uh, who's my sister, she's the yarn curator, she um, had test knit this last year, and I don't think she ever finished. <laughs> um, but it's still a really beautiful pattern, and it utilizes like almost every last yard of an advent kit. 
Up next I have Free the Minis by Amy Meeks and there is both a wrap and a scarf version of this. So again, there you have options if you need more options in your life. <laughs> So I have a couple of pattern suggestions here from the designer Skinanigans. Um, of course, everybody probably saw her Northeasterly blanket. I'm not sure if it came out one or two years ago. I have actually started a crochet version of that. It was originally a knit pattern by Ellie of Skinanigans. However, um, she worked with the designer behind Harbor Crochet and that person designed it. Or adapted it into a crochet pattern so I personally am really enjoying it more as a crochet pattern versus a knit pattern I will be showing that for the first time on next week's podcast episode so stay tuned for that but Ellie also had a couple of other great patterns worth mentioning this one is the seedlings greetings shawl and I really like how it uses like all these little wedge shapes to kind of make one big half pie shawl and finally I really love her opalite pattern as well it's another kind of modular knit um, that would be fun to play with maybe blending some scraps and or a mini kit um, since it kind of uses like one main solid color next to your accent colors. The last three patterns that I have here are sock patterns. Um, these next two are by Natalie Sheldon. She has designed a pair of socks last year and this year, so 2019 and 2020. They're called Advent Socks 2019 and 2020. <laughs> um, and I really want to make both of these. I think they're both super adorable. Um, they're kind of like a sampler color work type of pattern, sock pattern. I have picked out yarn to make the 2019 socks and I'm kind of scheming in the back of my mind to make the 2020 pair since they like literally just came out this week. I have absolutely no business whatsoever casting on yet another pair of socks, um, but you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. And finally, I have the bundled up socks by Mina Phillips of Knitting Expat Designs. I think these are a really cute kind of like bubble pattern on the sock leg and the sock foot. And again, these would also be a really great use of scraps. Lastly, I just wanted to mention a couple of designers who have pretty wide libraries of either Advent specific patterns or patterns that could be adapted to using advent kits or mini kits. First, of course, is the queen of advents and that is Amba O'Brien. I know she has been designing advent patterns since about 2017. The first one, um, I believe, is the adventuring wrap and this is the one that I made that year. Um, I used the 12 colors from the Jimmy Beans uh, Madeline Tosh semi-precious collection um, that I collected throughout the year. That was the wrong side by the way. <laughs> and then I supplemented the, the other 12 colors um, from my stash. So it's a really neat construction in that you make the two V's and then you like graft them in the middle. I really loved how this turned out. Uh, last year I knit her Adventurous wrap. I don't know. I can never keep the name straight because they all have advent, advent in them. Um, this year I think she called them all Radvent so that's a little bit easier to keep track of. But yes this is the like wrap version which is almost more like a skinny shawl to me. And of course I opted for the fringe because as we've already established I love a good bit of fringe. This is the advent calendar that I dyed up last year, um, which was crystals and gemstones themed. There is also a cowl version of this, and I know that she released two or three other patterns last year. Um, I'm not sure if they have like this exact same motif or if they're a little bit different. But again, she's got four patterns coming out this year, so go check out her page. Her designs are always written really well and easy to understand, and she has a very active um, Ravelry group where people are of course always happy to help out. The next designer who comes to mind is Helen Stewart and the two patterns that I can think of right off the top of my head are her Dust of Snow wrap which you hold a strand of mohair with your advent minis 
and I believe it's kind of a, like a lace sampler type pattern as well. And then her Land of Sweets cowl is also kind of similar in that I think it's a kind of a sampler style where it has a variety of stitches, but also you're changing colors. Um, so those are both really cute. And she also did the Habitation throw last year. That was kind of the it pattern that everyone was knitting. It is yet another pattern that I would love to make. However, I have plenty of blanket whips going on at the moment. One of those which is my Battenberg blankets. That leads me to the next person who is Sandra Paul of the Cheery Heart podcast. She has a bunch of free patterns for blankets on her Ravelry page. So like the Battenberg, um, the Vintage Lace Sampler, her Spice of Life patterns. I believe there's two versions of that. Um, so you should go and check those out. So I believe she also has another like shawl pattern called the Ziggy shawl, which a lot of people have adapted to use um, advents or mini skeins for that as well. So finally, I cannot go without mentioning one of my favorite designers, and that is Stephen West of West Knits. Um, a lot of his patterns are great for stash busting and using up small amounts of yarn, or he has a lot of like scrappy marl products as well. Um, I I actually adapted his dotted raise pattern to use the advent calendar that I got. Um, I think this was in 2018 from Artemis Yarns. So I used about 18 of the minis in that set and I just kind of faded them as I saw fit um, to make this beautiful dotted raise shawl. This is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever knit just based off of the colors and also I really love this shawl shape. I tend to wear this a lot. I'm not a big pattern repeater but this is my second dotted raise and I would absolutely knit a third one. <laughs> So that is that. The only final tips that I have for you guys is uh, number one, just have an open mind when you're pattern browsing on Ravelry. A lot of things that are like plain garter or stockinette would be really easy to adapt into a fade system. Um, try searching for samplers or advent patterns in Ravelry. Try browsing some hashtags on Instagram. You never know what you're going to come across that will strike your fancy. Um, but also, I really only scratched the surface here. Again, these are kind of patterns that I really love and are kind of in the back of my mind to make. Um, but there are a ton of other patterns out there. And of course, I just wanted to mention, if you're unable to afford a full advent calendar from an indie dyer, um, maybe you just buy a couple of minis from one that you really like, and then you can kind of supplement with leftovers from your stash or get in touch with a couple of other friends who are interested in doing a swap. Um, it's always fun to kind of wrap up some minis and have something to open every day in the lead up to Christmas or whatever you celebrate throughout the holidays. So let me know in the comments down below, are you planning on doing any advent knitting this year? What patterns are you planning on knitting? Who did you get a kit from? <laughs> um, and I will see you guys shortly in my next video. I am going to be doing my 400 subscriber giveaway. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you soon. Bye.